so nice to have you um, here today with us, um, our philosophical community. And our today's session is about um, Plato's Republic, Book 7, The Allegory of the Cave. Um, have you ever heard of it? Um, let's start with that. The Allegory of the Cave. Well, in fact, what, mm -hmm. when I first um, heard about it, um, I was a university student uh, in Thessaloniki, and I uh, used to sneak into the uh, philosophy department, uh, um, attending classes there. And uh, when I first heard of the algorithm of the cave, um, I was taken aback by the uh, Plato's uh, uh, fantasy and imagination, uh, which uh, was beyond uh, limits. It was uh, one of his uh, greatest works, actually. Don't you think, Chris? It's something that most people probably feel that they have heard of or understand if they have heard of anything about Plato. Uh, so it's very well known, that's for sure. What about you, Samuel? What does it remind you of? Yeah, sure. Hey, what, 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 is, what was the question again? I'm sorry. What does this remind you of, the allegory of the cave? Does it remind you of something in particular? Does it bring any kind of memories? Uh, I mean, it's... It... Um, not in particular, but you know, it, 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 um, I mean, we all have, we probably all have this experience of, of, of seeing shadows. Um, so I mean, that might bring that to mind. Um, I mean, I, that's, yeah. that's, this is what I, you know, think. Yeah, definitely. Um, when I and when I first read um, the dialogue between Socrates and Glaucon, I was even more surprised, uh, and especially the, the part when Socrates uh, said, "And now let me show in a figure how far our nature is enlightened or unenlightened. Behold, human beings living in an underground cave, which has a mouth open towards the light, and reaching." all along the cave. Here, they've been from their childhood and have their legs and necks chained so that they cannot move and can only see before them being prevented by the chains from turning round their heads. Above and behind them, a fire is blazing at a distance and between the fire and the prisoners, there is a raised way and you will see, if you look, a low wall built along the way, like the screen which marionette players have in front of them, over which they show the puppets. It's a splendid description and explanation of how the uh, puppeteers uh, show their puppets made of wood uh, in the form of animals or objects. And uh, they keep walking uh, um, back and forth a corridor and holding these statues um, over the low partition wall. And um, um, these uh, objects, thanks to a fire uh, which um, uh, lies behind them, uh, cast shadows on the wall um, and the prisoners um, take a look at them um, all the time. Um, it's, it's a fascinating description. Um, so um, what, what does this mean for you? Um, Samuel um, told us that um, um, we are used to seeing shadows uh, in our everyday life. 
And we cannot actually escape from uh, this unless something else happens. Um, so let's consider all these. Um, well, anytime you can jump in, um, okay, in the conversation and uh, have your own say. Uh, so um, these um, prisoners are constantly looking at the wall in front of them. And um, they think that uh, this is their uh, reality. This is their real world they live in. They don't know that uh, this is uh, not a reality, but they do believe that their world is real. And they live in the so-called material realm uh, because of the fact that they are passive receivers. And um, the shadows which are cast on the wall uh, are the only are the only reality that uh, they see. Um, I've got a question. Um, how before you go before you go before you, before you go there? Yeah, uh, this is the ja this is in, the yeah. reality. The real the, the reality of the prisoners. The reality of the prisoners are the shadows. You go yes. to the Chinese uh, theater, there are shadows usually uh, depicted on a screen. Yes. And this is the reality. When you look at it, you know, when we look at the movie, for example, exactly. this is our reality at that particular point. You know, obviously, a movie is bullshit. It's nothing. So this is just the reality of these people. And can we claim that that reality is 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 incorrect or, or, or not real? Um, yes, Chris, you want to jump in? Uh, I, I'll come to Samuel's point. Uh, I think that what, what I think when I think about this particular allegory is that we have many uh, metaphors, allegories, stories, explorations of the difference or potential difference between what we experience empirically with our senses and what philosophers or scientists or creators and writers assert is a greater actual transcendent or a meaningful reality. So this ranges from uh, uh, things like the matrix, which would assert that we are in a kind of simulated version, which is real in terms of our experience of it, of course, but that actually, once you actually step beyond the immediate empirical experience, once you take the relevant pill, you are suddenly aware that there is a deeper underlying or overarching reality. And this is uh, expressed also in other creative or philosophical uh, approaches throughout history. And then obviously many religions will say that there is a divine or transcendent reality which exists beyond our experience of the world, whether you call that spiritual or metaphysical or something else that is beyond our experience. So it's not diminishing the immediate essential sense in which we cannot help but have the world as it is now for us, but it suggests that there is something beyond and greater. And I think this is something that might be hardwired into us as human beings, because we may always feel that there is something just beyond what we can see or feel. But it seems to me that what Plato is saying, perhaps at least for the first time then, uh, in terms of well-known ideas, is that unlike religions which require either belief or faith or revelation to see this greater reality, that you can actually reach this enlightenment through reason. It is actually possible to achieve this uh, illumination, uh, if you like, on, on the deeper reality through a process of 
philosophical reasoning, education through work, through some work which is empirical. So this to me is what I think is different, but uh, perhaps since then, other philosophers have said, perhaps we can't do that, who knows? But uh, uh, that's what I think Plato is saying, that there is like many, many people have said and many religions, there is this transcendental or more illuminating, more revealing dimension where suddenly the deeper meanings and realities and choices become apparent. And that individual people, assuming they are clever enough, uh, can actually get there through the, a process of reasoning and education and, and understanding. Yeah, definitely. And it was... But the question is, how do you get there if you're... If you're uh... Sorry. Yeah, the, yeah. Que go, the question is, go, how go. do you get there if you are, if you are chained into a wall? So the reality that you view is 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 the shadows, but you cannot do anything about it. So I think Plato, but you'll correct me, Samuel, was of the view that perhaps not everyone could make their way out, but certainly the elite class or perhaps even just one uh, philosopher king by virtue of their ability to perceive this deeper reality would be in the position to make the best possible decisions for the self, the soul, for the people who are still in the cave and for the city, if you like, for the perfect city state or, for, or perhaps for the mind uh, in terms of the part of the mind that can perceive this reality can drag the rest of the mind or the rest of the uh, the community along to the right decisions, even if they don't always see the, the bigger picture themselves. Um, but it might be that it is possible for, for everyone to be dragged out. But I think even uh, in the, in the uh, allegory, he talks about the unwillingness uh, of people to change their view and the fact that uh, uh, and this is something very common isn't it you know when you someone will say oh I have seen the light uh, whether it's religious or uh, philosophical or scientific why don't the rest of you stupid people believe me or understand why don't you why don't you follow me into the light uh, and uh, that's very common that's my understanding but perhaps yes. there's a difference um, um... Uh, you've got a point okay. uh, here, Chris. We, so and, we all uh, we all agree. Yeah. And uh, uh, Samuel's question: uh, Do we think that the shadows the prisoners see reflect their own reality? Um, we uh, we can answer to that question that yes, we might uh, also believe that what they believe is their own reality um, in the form of shadows. And uh, why? Because uh, as Plato states, they've been there from their childhood. And uh, what this means is that um, uh, they, um, they didn't have the chance to get any kind of education, uh, not in the sense of uh, um, uh, being trained uh, to, to, to follow a career path, but in the sense of um, uh, education uh, for self-development. And if there is a way out the cave, um, this definitely has to do with the nature of uh, the physical education one could have uh, to be able to follow an ascent to the cave. And... Um, um, this ascent might be a difficult one, but it does require coercion. Uh, and by that I mean uh, that education can transform a whole self. Now we, we are talking about the turn around the whole soul, whole self. It's not about changing ideas. It's not about changing practices. Uh, it's 
uh, instead the process that transforms one life. So it's the turning of the soul into spiritual objects. Um, this is the kind of education uh, one needs to become aware of the bigger context around us, of the understanding of the self. Um, and this will only be done through a re-evaluation of uh, his own uh, beliefs and false beliefs and opinions and, assum and assumptions. And uh, by being able to perceive um, these um, truths uh, that are gradually revealed in front of his eyes, um, he would be able to um, see the true light, the sun. So education is the key factor here, I think, Samuel. Don't you agree? With Plato. I, 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 I disagree with Plato, but... Um, yeah, you're free to disagree. I, 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 my, my feeling is that we... Yeah. That regardless of how educated we are, or how enlightened we are, we still uh, live in a shadow. We still see only shadows. Each one of us sees their own shadows. And the notion of one of us or someone becomes to a place where they can see the light uh, reminds me very much of, uh, of the church uh, or other people that have seen God or, or know where it goes. But the reality is that we all know that there is something out there or we think there is something out there that is not reachable. And I'm not sure that any of us is able to reach that. Educated or not. Um, well, as Chris said, it's um, it's an internal process, kind of inside out process. You've got to work it um, on your own. Um, you got to do a lot of introspection before you reach uh, to the point where you you see the. Uh, the light out there. Um, it has to do with um, you can inter you can introspect yeah. all you want, but mm -hmm. <laughs> it brings you to a particular point. That that particular point is not necessarily the truth. That particular point is not necessarily the light. It gets you to a point. That point could be another shadow. Could be. Could be. It's not. Uh, it's not so easy uh, to um, see the light at the end of a tunnel. It's not such an easy procedure. Do you know? Do you know anyone who has seen the light? I'm sorry. Did yeah, anyone do see you the know light? Of anyone who have seen, well, uh, who have Plato, seen the light? Plato, Plato did, uh, for sure. That's um, what. Um, uh, some um, uh, scientists believe, and uh, that's um, what uh, some theologists so believe. Um, well, as a philosopher, are... you can see a light. You know, you can see the light. The light that you see is this particular light. Is very individual light. Is not necessarily the light that will enlighten all of our lives uh, enlighten all of us. You see the very particular light. That particular light is not necessarily even we know today that Plato was wrong in many, in many ways. At least we perceive it that way. So you can, what I'm saying is you can, you can maybe reach a lot, you can reach the light, the light, but it will be a very individual light. Definitely. And even that light might be a shadow. Yeah. And um, one interpretation, only one, because we could give thousand interpretations uh, to Plato's writing, but one interpretation that we could give uh, to that light uh, would, would be uh, um, that this light would be a personal one, a personalized light, an individual light, in the sense that somebody who is well-educated, um, 
with the purpose of self-development uh, could better pass on the knowledge to uh, other generations. That could be one inter interpretation that we could give. And um, that this person um, would acquire knowledge uh, in, a, uh, in such a way that um, he could persuade other people to believe in something, in some purpose, so that their lives are purpose driven. They have a purpose. They have some um, meaning, so that so that they can become meaningful. In the end, you know what I mean. Um, so we come back to uh, to a Plato's statement um, that he says that you've got to persuade somebody um, in the good sense. You've got to uh, persuade somebody um, to follow you. Uh, now, let me read that um, sentence. Um, the intention of the legislator did not aim at making any one class in the state happy above the rest. It's the happiness of the whole state that matters. And for that sense, um, the legislator held the citizens together by persuasion and necessity. Uh, so this means that you've got to um, um, make somebody believe in something, in a purpose, by actually persuading him to do so. Um, you can exemplify um, on this if you like. Uh, so it's the power of persuasion through education, in a sense. Uh, it has a very deep meaning, um, <clears throat> but uh, persuasion, not like sophists' persuasion, because the sophists also try to persuade people to follow them and to do a lot of things. Uh, persuasion like um, <clears throat> follow somebody for a true purpose, uh, uh, so that his life becomes meaningful again. And uh, he also helps his other um, fellows uh, cooperating uh, among each other within a community, let's say. That's the way we see it. Of course, you can uh, add your own um, thoughts and feelings if you like. That's the job of a philosopher. A sense. I mean, I think that um, yes, I think Samuel is right in terms of the limitations when you start to look at this with a lot of detail, uh, especially if you consider the more recent developments or interpretations of the world in this way. So there are two ways perhaps to reflect on this. One is to acknowledge that at the time when this approach was first written. This is quite revolutionary in terms of world history, the religious, spiritual practices of the time may have talked about leaders or uh, persuasive uh, priests or, or, or people who had access to the greater reality being the guides for the rest of humanity but they didn't necessarily say that there was a holistic linked world which linked both the moral, metaphysical and empirical world that was reachable through the act of reason, that was reachable through an intellectual process and yes. that knowledge was in fact simply a, a resource that could walk someone into this absolute reality and that there was no difference between uh, the absolute reality and moral reality and empirical reality so this i think at the time was certainly very unusual and interesting 
and it still has some power despite the faults. Um, and on the other hand, what you can say is it's a it's a very easy analogy allegory to understand. So it's very nicely expressed poetically. So it's helpful because that's what allegories are there for, in, in effect, to yeah. paint a picture that makes it easy for us to get our heads round difficult concepts. But since then, you know, what 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 would you say? We we know that there is a, a subatomic world of quantum physics that no one can see. Now this is a this is a reality, but none of us will ever see it. We will only see the effects of it. Um, mm -hmm. And we need uh, particle physicists to tell us what what's happening there. Uh, we know that Buddhists believe that uh, there are levels of uh, of um, illumination and uh, uh, of um, metaphysical transcendence uh, that go beyond anything you can achieve, but through meditation and karma and dharma, you can make some progress in your journey, perhaps across multiple lives.